Manpower Ministry will give more detailed guidelines and information to help firms with outdoor workers cope with heat stress. Some of these include the frequency of measures like rest and hydration and the conditions when workers must be redeployed indoors. Some employers have even introduced extra measures like providing online resources about heat stress for their workers. There are some 15 outdoor workers at this farm. Among them, Mr. Ting. On any given day, he spends about five hours under the sun, pruning, weeding and harvesting. His employer has given the team free reign on how often they go on breaks. Still, she acknowledges the need for a proper guideline. As an employer, sure, you might have a way of doing things that are comfortable, but uh, you need to recognise that you might have a, a blind side, right? And that blind side could be covered by the regulations. Uh, so it could be just fixing temperature monitors out there. Um, I think a lot of these uh, can be done in order to uh, adhere to the measures. There are three temperature bands under the revised framework up from two previously. Temperatures are measured hourly on what's called a wet bulb globe temperature meter. For each band, it clearly states when breaks should be taken and how long they should last. It gives the contractors or companies a good reference point on when to rest, how long to rest, and what to do at which point of time. When there's no, no definite number, we may, not do, we, we may not be able to give a definite guideline on what to do, how to do, and when to do. The framework also spells out when certain measures must be provided. These include rest areas with fans or cooler boxes with ice packs. Mr Lowe's firm has gone the extra mile to ensure its workers stay safe and productive. We have designed a QR code for all new workers to scan. So whenever there's a latest information in, in relation to heat stress, so they will be informed when to rest, how much time they needed. Uh, on top of that, we have a designated forklift that will go around the site to dampen the ground to make sure we lower down the temperature. Mr Lowe says the mandated use of on-site temperature meters for some firms may be a challenge. He says each unit costs some $300 with an additional yearly calibration fee of about $400. The Manpower Ministry says it will conduct checks at work sites. Fines and stop work orders may be issued for non-compliance. And for more analysis on this, we're now joined by Associate Professor Jason Lee. He is the Director of the Heat Resilience and Performance Centre at NUS Yong Lulin School of Medicine. Now, he is also a member of the Heat Stress Guidelines Expert Panel. Professor Lee, welcome to the programme. So, the framework is now aligned with a three-tier heat stress advisory for the general population. But how useful is it when the outdoor activity of workers differ from the general population? Yes, this revised framework for the outdoors workers has now been aligned with the three-tier heat stress advisory for the general population. I believe this addition is mainly for alignment. Note the worker before and after shifts is now part of the general population. So different bendings may potentially cause uh, confusion. Okay, now the demands on the workers will be higher than the general population. So if everything else stays constant, then one would expect the same WBGT bendings to be potentially too liberal for the workers. But we must note that with the revised framework, uh, it has also included mandatory measures specific to each band to reduce the resultant heat strain. So you can say while the heat load is higher for the workers, these measures are also in place to reduce the overall heat strain imposed on them. And global warming, Prof, has been intensifying in recent years. Uh, what are some of the key factors to consider when it comes to heat safety at the workplace? Well, the first, you know, the Workplace Safety Act is there, and also employers have the duty to ensure that the workplaces are safe. So they must protect the workers' safety and health of uh, every employee. So these measures are mandatory. Uh, the employers must implement the required heat measures at varying WBGT bands. They include heat acclimatization, hydration, uh, resting in shade for outdoor workers. These are all very doable. And so I hope that the ministry will continue to monitor whether these measures 
uh, these mandatory measures are sufficient and adjust them accordingly in face of a warming world. The concerns that we have about heat safety at the workplace, uh, in what ways do the revised guidelines address those concerns? The revised guidelines ability, first, the motivation is to augment compliance by making it more specific and clearer what exactly to do in each bending. Uh, but above all, in my opinion, at the end of the day, the employers and the occupiers must believe that these measures are beneficial for their workers uh, and their businesses. I want to emphasize that good heat measures are good for workers and also businesses. It's not a zero-sum game. So I hope we will continue to study the pain points still on the ground, the concerns, and then continuously augment these policies. Mm, and some of these measures, they can be seen as encouraging, but not all of the recommendations are compulsory at this point. So how effective are the measures for outdoor workers um, and how much difference will they help in tackling heat stress for workers? Well, as, as I mentioned earlier, these measures, some of them are mandatory. So I think it's not asking too much you know, for the employers to implement this based on the bendings. So I said these measures, let's say I hear the commoditization, hydration, resting in shit for outdoor workers. These are all very doable. You know? But if you want to do more, there are additional practices uh, in place. So if, if, if you want to do more, please go ahead. Uh, and, and I really hope the ministry will continue to monitor whether these mandatory measures are sufficient and, and, and therefore adjust them accordingly. And, and experts have been sounding the alarm about temperatures rising. Um, what additional measures are necessary to help not just the outdoor workers, but also workers who um, operate indoors to combat the sweltering heat that we're experiencing right now? Yeah, both outdoor and indoor workers and those including those working in confined space you know the attention needs to be uh, uh given to them but first we we need to be first aware that thermal discomfort is not just about preventing heat injuries it can also reduce work productivity very significantly in our context the safety and also the morale of our workers so number one the employers must first uh, recognize that this warming world that we are in is inevitable and therefore heat management uh, for the company must be a critical a critical aspect of corporate social responsibility. Moving ahead, I think we ought to harness the right science, technology, co-produce the solutions with the, the employers, and companies should work towards integrating heat management into their overall business strategies to heat proof their business, their workers. I, re I really urge that you know, we do what we can at our respective platform to protect workers' health and safety in this warming world. Professor Lee, appreciate your thoughts and time. Thank you very much for speaking with us. That was Associate Professor Jason Lee from the NUS Yong Lulin School of Medicine.